Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on cyclical unemployment. Now, cyclical unemployment is also known as demand deficient unemployment or Keynesian unemployment. And essentially, it's caused by a lack of aggregate demand or spending on goods and services. Keep in mind that the demand for labour is a derived demand. So if consumers are cutting back on their spending, this reduces employment demand as businesses look to control their costs. We call that labour shedding or downsizing. And this has certainly been a persistent problem in many countries, especially countries inside the Eurozone, such as Greece and Spain and Italy, where economic growth has been negative or weak and unemployment has been persistently high. I think the best way to show cyclical unemployment on the diagram is to show an inward shift of aggregate demand, as shown in our diagram. That causes a contraction of aggregate supply and a fall in the level of real national output. Another way you could show cyclical unemployment is to use a production possibility frontier. So in a recession, or even in a slowdown, a real output is contracting or barely rising at all. And this leads to an increase in spare productive capacity. Firms then decide to control their costs, and they may do that by shedding workers, depending on the contractual arrangements that they have with their employees. But either way, in a recession, we tend to see cyclical unemployment go up. We're moving from point F to point E. We're moving further away from the production possibility frontier boundary. This chart is quite interesting. It shows the employment rate for the British economy since the year 2000. In the first half of the decade and into 2006-2007, the employment rate was rising gently from around 72.5% 72, 72 of the population of working age to just under 73% in 2004. But notice what happened in the recession, which started in 2008 and worked its way through 2009. The employment rate fell quite sharply by more than 2% of the population of working age. Indeed, it continued to edge lower even in 2010 as the economy was starting to recover. And that's because employment tends to be a lagging indicator of the economic cycle. In other words, it takes a little bit of time to start recovering for business to be sufficiently confident to start to take on more people. Now, since then, the employment rate in the UK has been increasing. Indeed, in 2015, it rose above 73% and is now at its highest level for many years. This is a sign that cyclical unemployment in the UK has been falling. This chart shows the rate of economic growth in the UK quarter on quarter. In other words, the, the three-month change in real national output. And hopefully you can see that were, there were five quarters of recession in the UK, then a recovery and a slow one at that, a couple of little dips in output and since then the economy has been growing every quarter by about 0.5% or just above. So there is an economic cycle to the GDP data and if we take the, the same time frame and look at the unemployment rate we find that the unemployment rate does indeed not quite mirror but it certainly moves in a different direction to the GDP growth rate. So unemployment started to rise from just over 5% in 2008 reaching 8% in 2010, 2011, and peaking just in 2012. So it took a little time for unemployment to fall, even though the economy was recovering. And again, this is a sign that unemployment is a lagging indicator. So firms, for example, may, be, may think that the recovery may be temporary or may be weak, and they may not necessarily want to, to employ more people straight away. But that lag may have fallen compared to previous recessions. Since the economy has been growing, particularly the relatively strong growth from 2013 onwards, the rate of unemployment has been falling. And again, much of that will have been a fall in cyclical unemployment. So this has been a focus on cyclical unemployment. This is unemployment caused by, by a lack of aggregate demand or spending in the economy. The British economy has recovered quite well in recent times, and this has helped to bring the rate of unemployment down. But of course, there are many other types of unemployment. And in a future topic video, for example, we'll focus on structural unemployment as an alternative cause. 